Hey, hey, I'm Dave Ratt, and today I'm going to talk about bridge mono mode on audio power amplifiers, primarily seen in professional amps. Quite often we'll find a bridge mono switch. Now, bridge mono switch takes the amp from a stereo amp with two inputs and two outputs and changes it to a mono amp with a single input and one output capable of twice the power output. In its most simple fashion, what it does is it takes a stereo power amp, channel A, that has an input and it goes to two terminals in the output, a plus and a minus, and channel B, an input, goes to two outputs, a plus and a minus, and all the bridge mono does is that switch takes the A input, runs it through a polarity reverse, and puts it into channel B. Nothing more. Um, super simple. In fact, you don't even need a bridge mono switch to utilize bridge mono mode on, a, on an amplifier. Not only do you not need a bridge mono switch, you can take two mono block amps, completely separate units, completely unrelated to each other, and create a single mono amp out of them. Not all amps, but most amps. If the ground terminal, if the black terminal, if you take a meter between the black terminal and the chassis ground, and you find that the black terminal has no voltage on it, it's truly a ground, and it's a zero volt, and all the voltage is on the red terminal, then you can take that amp, find another one just like it, and make a bridge mono amp out of the pair. Um, so, how do we do it? Very complex, you take an XLR input, you balanced input, oh, it's gonna be easier with an XLR balanced in, um, and then you run it into a Y cable, and you take one side of the Y cable going to amp number one, you put a polarity reverse on the output of y uh, the other side of the Y cable and run it to amp number two, and now amp number one is in polarity, amp number two is out of polarity. What happens now is if you run a, a signal, whatever that signal is, I'll use a sine wave, into channel A, the opposite of that signal will be input into channel B. So the output of channel A and the output of channel B. Well, instead of this signal of channel A being, let's say, let's say this is 50 volts to ground, 50 volts to ground, and then negative 50 volts to ground, so this positive terminal swinging uh, up 50 volts and neg down 50 volts in relation to this minus ground, minus terminal on ground, you've got, and the channel B, which is doing exact same thing and opposite, um, you're actually connecting between the two plus terminals so that when the channel one goes up 50 volts, channel two is going down 50 volts, so now you get a 100 volt maximum differential rather than just a 50 volt maximum differential. So you've doubled your output voltage. Pretty straightforward. Now you've taken both those amps and you've used them as a single mono block. Uh, doesn't matter if they're in the same chassis or not. Um, there's some side effects to this as well, though. If the amp, amps tend to have a minimum impedance that they can run into. It'll say four ohms or two ohms. Um, and below its minimum impedance, the amp struggles to put out power. It puts out less power or it gets too hot or it's not rated or some other issue in the design comes into play. And so you want to look at the minimum rated impedance. So if the minimum rated impedance for per channel is four ohms, then when you take the two channels and you run them in this bridge mono mode, where you've polarity reverse one channel and you connect between them, now the load, each channel is going to see one half that load. So if you were to put four ohms on the output, then each channel would see two ohms of that, and it would be uh, more burdensome on the amp. So whatever the minimum impedance of the channel is, when you use the channels together, you have to double that. So if it's a four ohm minimum, then you'd have eight ohm minimum in bridge mono mode. And the power should be somewhat the same. If an amp puts out a thousand watts per channel into four ohms, then it should put out 2000 watts bridge mono into eight ohms. 
Um, all this is pretty simple. What would we use it for? Why not just run the amp? If you have two 18s, let's see if two 18s in the same box and you've got a thousand watt per channel amp and you have a four channel, a four wire conductor NL4 going to that box and you got one 18 on channel A and one 18 on channel B, eight ohms on channel A, eight ohms on channel B and um, I said a thousand watts, let's do 500 watts per channel. Um, let's draw that. So we've got our amp with our A out, and we've got two wires going to speaker number one, which is eight ohms, and it puts out 500 watts. And we've got our B channel, which goes to speaker number two, 18 inch number two, and it also puts out 500 watts. So we have the total capability of 1000 watts going to the pair of speakers. Also, let's say in this example that we have really long lines or we have thin wire. I'm just going to do it because it's easier for me to do the math in my head. And we're each of these speaker wires is one ohm. Now it's much higher than it would typically be, but we'll just use that. So let's say we have one ohm of resistance for the wire. So in this scenario, we have an eight ohm speaker, but we've got one ohm of resistance in the wire getting to the speaker goes to the eight ohm speaker and then one ohm coming back. So we've got a total of 10 ohms on the amplifier. Well, two of those eight ohms is lost in the speaker. And the same thing happens on the other side. We have a 10 ohm load with two ohms lost in. And let's say that we take that same scenario and we set up, we start messing with the wiring. So we still got our amp. And we've still got our four wires. And we still have our two speakers. But instead of running this amp in stereo mode, we're going to flip it to, we're going to take the speakers and we're going to connect the two ground wires together at the speakers. So this is the minus and this is the um, minus here, and this is the plus, and this is the plus. So now the speakers are in series with each other. Does this make sense? And we've just put a little jumper wire inside the box, and we made sure we did it on the ground terminal. We're making sure that we used an amp that has a, uh, a grounded output. Like some amps have both sides are already kind of internally in bridge mono mode. Both sides are hot, the black terminal's hot, or the, and the red term is also hot, but we have an amp that's typically the case where we have a um, ground terminal that is zero volts. All right, so now we run the amp in bridge mono mode, or we take and we run a polarity reverse on channel two. So we have an in polarity signal going to the speaker number one, and we have an out of polarity speaker going to number two, and we wire it such that this goes to the plus of one, the minus of this speaker, to the plus of this speaker, to the minus of this speaker, and we're connected to two hots of the amp. Plus of the amp goes to plus of one, minus of speaker one goes to plus of speaker two, and minus of speaker two goes back to here. And the plus minus combination, the center tap goes to the two black terminals, okay? Now we turn the amp on and we really have the exact same scenario. We have, well, how many watts? Do I, have? I have 500 watts going to this speaker. This is a ground, so it comes back just like it normally does. This is a ground, so it comes back like it normally does. And I've got out of polarity 500 watts going to this speaker. And we still have our one ohm loads, our one ohm wires. Um, everything seems the same, except in this scenario, we can actually cut these ground wires and just run this and this. So if we look at that in this way, we have the plus terminal here of channel one and the plus terminal of channel two going here to a speaker. Speaker runs to the other speaker and it comes back to here. So let's do the math on this. Let's take a look. So in one scenario, we had 
the two lines with one ohm each with an eight ohm speaker, one ohm each with an eight ohm speaker, and this speaker, this total load was 10 ohms, and this total load was 10 ohms, and we had, oh, I don't know, 500 watts, and 500 watts into each of those loads. Of the power delivered, two tenths, or one fifth, was the loss in the speaker line. And here, two tenths, or one fifth, we have a one fifth power loss. In a bridge mono situation, using that same scenario, if we take those two eight ohm loads and we put them in series, so that we have a 16 ohm load, and we run that exact same one of those wires to it and back, a one ohm wire to and back. Now we have 16 ohms plus the two ohms. So now we have 18 ohms. And since our amp puts out double the power into double the impedance, we have a thousand watts out. But of this scenario, we have two eighteenths or one ninth of the power is lost in speaker wires. In the other scenario, we had two tenths. So we had one fifth of the power was lost. That's almost half the power loss in the speaker lines by running bridge mono mode. And we're using less wire. We're only using two wires. If we doubled up and we used all four wires, now we got 0.5 ohm. We got one ohm, one ohm. They parallel down to 0.5 ohms. And these would parallel to 0.5 ohms because the two one ohm speaker wires would reduce their resistance. So then our total resistance would be 17 ohms. And the loss in the speaker lines would be one. 0.5 plus 0.5 would be 1 17th instead of 1 9th. And 1 17th is definitely, that's almost half again. So we've got one quarter the amount of loss in the speaker wires by using bridge mono mode. This is significant for very long cable runs. And it's actually the same concept of using 70 volt lines. Running very high voltage over thin wires is a way to transfer energy over long distances. It's why power lines for uh, between cities are very high voltage. You get a lot less loss due to the resistance of the cable when you run higher voltages. Running bridge mono mode allows you to run a higher voltage. All right, so we got another question here. So in my head, uh, or I would ask this question, if you run two speakers in series, two eight ohm speakers in series, or whatever ohms they are, um, we kind of introduce a new dilemma here. What if one speaker goes bad? It's a double 18 box. Well, if one speaker goes bad, they both shut off if they're in, if they're in series. If they were in parallel and one goes bad, then the other one keeps running. And if that box is not divided into two separate boxes, the one that keeps running now has double the enclosure volume that it's dealing with, and it's going to be flapping in the wind. Most likely that will blow as well. In the series, if one was to open or come unplugged or come unwired, then both of them stop working. Um, having both stop working could be a bigger issue to you. Having one under extra duress due to the cabinet design could also be an issue. Let's say that, oh, another thing, if the speakers are not exactly matched, if one slightly got a different voice quote, it might draw more power. It might, there might be an imbalance of draw because they're in series. Um, I haven't had that problem, but it could be a concern. Well, if you have truly a bridge mono amp where you're running plus, the two pluses of the amps out, and the minuses of the amps are actual grounds, and um, so you have a, a hot and a ground. There's nothing that stops you from tying those, from taking one, the other, or both of those grounds and running them out to the center wire that goes between the two. And you could use a three wire system and it just grounds out that middle, or you could take those two cables and run it to the middle. Now in a perfect world, 
there wouldn't be any voltage here. This would be a virtual neutral. Um, but because every time this one goes up, this one goes down and they should be balanced. And this should look familiar because this is exactly what a balanced line is. A bridge mono amp is actually taking, you're turning the polarity of the B channel in relation to the A channel, you're making it out of polarity such that the red terminals of a power amp are actually a balanced line. And you have an in polarity on channel A, an out of polarity on channel B, and the ground terminals are your ground or earth that doesn't need to be connected, but could be connected to the center between the two. All right, I know I went in around and around in circles and talked about all kinds of um, other stuff. Hopefully that makes sense. I invite your questions and um, cool, fun stuff. Bridge model mode, super useful.